Before the avalanche, my wife ignored my pleas and went to meet her first love. To save her, I was caught in the snowstorm. Meanwhile, Charlotte and her first love lay in our marital bed, lost in passion. In my final moments, I called Charlotte for help, but all I heard was her cold, impatient voice. Jack, all you're good at is lying. If you die, it'll suit me just fine. In the end, I perished in the snow-covered mountains, and Charlotte, with tear-filled eyes, dragged her first love to join me in death. Chapter 1. I died. Killed by an avalanche orchestrated by my wife's first love. Last night, Charlotte ignored my warnings and insisted on going skiing to meet her first love, and I, wanting to protect her, followed along. Suddenly, a loud boom echoed through the mountains, and the avalanche grew more violent. In the distance, I saw the cold, victorious look in Lucas's eyes as he spoke to me, his voice cutting through the empty expanse of the snowy mountain. Jack, only the dead are obedient. So, he enunciated each word clearly, like a death sentence. You shall rest here forever. Hearing this, my heart clenched, and though I wanted to run, it was too late. Before I could react, a massive wall of snow came crashing down, swallowing me whole. In an instant, I was buried, the cold seeping into my bones, my blood seeming to freeze. A crushing loneliness surged over me like a tidal wave. The feeling of suffocating inch by inch in a desperate struggle to survive was a despair unlike anything I had ever experienced. But I didn't want to die. If I died, what would happen to Charlotte? With all my remaining strength, I fumbled for my phone in my pocket and called Charlotte. Seconds passed like hours, but no one answered. The ringing in my ears felt like a death knell. If I closed my eyes now, I might never open them again. Finally, on the fourth attempt, Charlotte picked up. It took all my strength to speak, and even then, my voice was hoarse and broken. Charlotte, help me. There was a pause, followed by a derisive laugh, her tone dripping with sarcasm. Jack, what game are you playing now? You're a meteorologist an expert in survival. You really need me to save you. In my days, I heard another familiar voice in the background. It was Lucas. Suddenly, everything became clear. Charlotte wasn't missing because she was in danger. She had gone to meet Lucas. And here I was, a fool, risking my life to protect her, while she was with him. Charlotte's voice turned icy, colder than the snow weighing down on me, and it cut deep into my heart. Jack, are you even a man? I don't have time for you right now. Lucas is hurt. Stop disgusting me. The next moment. The call ended abruptly, her words felt like a knife to my heart, leaving me breathless with pain, and with that, my last hope for survival was extinguished. I stared blankly at the phone, not knowing how much time had passed. The air grew thinner, my lungs ached, and my body went numb from the cold until I finally closed my eyes. Losing the last remnants of consciousness, along with the snow, my heart was buried, my soul lingered with Charlotte and Lucas. At the foot of the mountain, the two of them huddled close together, a sight that pierced my very being. Lucas, the men responsible for my death, had lured me to the avalanche site, setting off the explosion that buried me. Charlotte, looking shaken, was still comforting Lucas, her voice filled with concern. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Lucas took her hand, his expression soft and full of affection. Don't worry about me. As long as you're safe, that's all that matters. Hearing this, Charlotte's expression turned angry again, and she spat out her words with venom. Thank goodness you came to save me in time. Not like Jack, that selfish coward more concerned with saving his own skin than showing his face. I curled my lips into a bitter smile. When the avalanche struck, I had immediately gone searching for her, not caring about my own life. Yet she knew nothing of this and still saw me as a despicable person. Their tender exchange was like poison to me. No one remembered that I was still buried beneath the thick layers of snow, forgotten by all. Just then, a member of the rescue team approached and asked, was there anyone else with you when the avalanche happened? I still held onto a faint hope that Charlotte might care about me. But in the next moment, I heard Charlotte's cold, indifferent voice. No, it was just us. I couldn't help but let out a self-deprecating laugh. After all these years of marriage, it seemed my love had been for nothing. As the footsteps faded away, so did the last remnants of love and longing I had for Charlotte. Chapter 2 In the hospital, Lucas lay on the bed, looking weak and fragile. My soul lingered by the window, feeling nothing but bitter irony. His cunning was deeper than I had imagined. Beside him, Charlotte held his hand. Her expression filled with worry and concern. Lucas, you need to rest for the next few days. Don't worry, I've taken time off to take care of you. A wave of sourness welled up inside me, spreading through my entire being, and I could no longer suppress it. When Charlotte was with me, she always put her work first. The day before she insisted on going to the mountain to meet Lucas was our wedding anniversary. I had gone out of my way to prepare a table full of her favorite dishes, carefully planning a surprise for her return. Flowers, gifts, and a candlelit dinner. I hadn't missed a single detail of the rituals that women typically appreciate, but that day, 
Charlotte called to say she had to work late. I understood, and kept reheating the dishes, waiting for her. In the end, she told me she wouldn't be coming home, and before I could respond, she hung up. That night, I sat alone in the darkened living room until she finally arrived, and she came back reeking of men's cologne, Lucas's. In that instant, the light in my eyes was extinguished, and the pain that settled in was so intense it took my breath away. I couldn't find the words to speak. It turned out that in Charlotte's heart, it wasn't work that was important. It was me who was insignificant. Lucas gently patted Charlotte's shoulder, his smile tender. It's okay, Char. It's just a minor injury. I'll be fine. But Charlotte frowned, venting her frustration with me. It's all Jack's fault. If he hadn't called me, you wouldn't have lost your footing and fallen. All he ever does is cause me trouble. I wanted to explain. To tell Charlotte that the call wasn't a trick. But the dead can't speak. A glint of slyness flashed in Lucas's eyes. Though he maintained his feigned weakness. It's not Jack's fault. I was careless. He might have had an emergency. His words made me laugh in anger. Lucas knew I was buried under the snow and had deliberately fallen to divert Charlotte's attention so she wouldn't realize the danger I was in. Charlotte snorted. Her tone filled with disdain. You're too kind. Lucas. You don't know Jack like I do. What emergency could he have? He even lied on the phone about being buried in an avalanche. How ridiculous, he's a meteorologist. Does he think I'm an idiot? I let out a bitter smile, a wave of sadness washing over me. A meteorologist dying in an avalanche he had predicted, it was indeed ridiculous. But Charlotte seemed to forget that I did it for her. During Lucas's hospital stay, Charlotte prepared soup for him every day, acting like a dutiful wife. The entire ward praised her. You're such a virtuous young woman. Your husband is lucky to have you. Indeed, you're beautiful and caring. We're all envious. Upon hearing this, Lucas pulled Charlotte into his arms, gazing at her with deep affection. Char has always been the best in my eyes. Charlotte blushed slightly, smiling but saying nothing. Yet her silent acceptance hurt more than any words could. All of this felt like a knife stabbing into my chest, leaving me bleeding and broken. After Lucas was discharged, Charlotte brought him back to our home. The moment they stepped inside, they were greeted by the remnants of the romantic evening I had prepared before I died. The balloons had deflated, the candles had burned out and the dishes on the table had gone cold and unappetizing. The gift lay discarded on the floor, unopened and abandoned, just like my feelings, which had always been trampled under Charlotte's feet. Standing in the doorway, Lucas put on a pitiful expression. Char, I've always wanted to surprise you, but I never had the right. Not like Jack, who could openly be by your side. A trace of pity appeared in Charlotte's eyes as she quickly shook her head, saying, No, Lucas, you're wonderful. Don't say that about yourself. It makes me sad. Then. She turned to the remnants of the surprise I had meticulously prepared, her face full of disgust. I hate these shallow things, just like I hate Jack. What else can he do besides these useless gestures? With that, she marched into the room, waving her hands and destroying everything. Did Charlotte really hate surprises? No, she loved them. I remember vividly the radiant smile on her face when she received flowers in college, flowers sent by Lucas. So for her, it wasn't the surprise that mattered, it was who prepared it. Amid the chaos. Something crashed to the ground, the sharp sound of breaking glass echoing through the room. My soul jolted as I looked over. It was a photo of Charlotte and me, now lying on the floor. The frame shattered. In the photo, we were young, standing beneath the dappled shade of trees, smiling brightly. It was one of the few happy memories we shared. This was the only photo we had together because, later on, Charlotte became so busy with work that she didn't even have time for our wedding photos. Lucas's gaze darkened as it fell upon the picture. Charlotte, sensing his unease casually said, it's broken, so be it, it doesn't matter, the next moment, I watched as she picked it up, tore it to shreds, and tossed the pieces into the trash without hesitation, Lucas lowered his head, a sinister, satisfied smile playing on his lips, I stared at the scene, my heart numb from the pain, I once believed that if I did everything right, I would eventually melt Charlotte's cold heart, now I realized it was nothing but a foolish dream, if someone doesn't love you, no matter what you do, it's all in vain, and I didn't want to hold on any longer. I was too tired. All that remained was the cake I had made with my own hands. Still sitting in the fridge. Suddenly, the shrill ring of a phone cut through the silence. Charlotte answered. Her voice laced with impatience. Who is this? On the other end was a familiar voice. And I was surprised. It was my junior colleague from university. Victoria. We had worked at the same company after graduation. And she was always cheerful and easygoing. Someone I got along well with. But now. She sounded furious her voice brimming with anger. Do you know that something terrible happened to Jack? Charlotte's brow furrowed, and she snorted, full of disdain. You're Jack's little junior, aren't you? What is this? Did Jack put you up to this? I don't have time for your games. Chapter 3 On the other end of the phone, Victoria hadn't expected such a response. She took a deep breath, 
trying to keep her emotions in check, but her voice trembled. I'm not lying to you. Jack is really dead. Those words only made Charlotte angrier. She thought I was using this lowly lie to pressure her. Charlotte's eyes were filled with disdain, her indifferent tone cutting deep. I'm sorry, I don't know what your goal is with this joke, but you can tell Jack that whether he's dead or alive, I won't change my mind. Her voice grew colder, and her sharp words stabbed at my heart like a knife. If he's dead, that's just fine with me. Then she hung up without hesitation, even adding the number to her blacklist. I silently watched Charlotte's actions, feeling a wave of bitterness tightening around my chest. As expected, she still didn't believe I was truly dead. Her last words made all the years I had invested seem like a joke, not worth mentioning. Beside her, Lucas took her hand, his voice gentle. Char, don't get upset. I'll be worried if you make yourself sick. Charlotte's previously domineering demeanor vanished as she nestled into Lucas's arms like a delicate woman, her voice sweet and tender. I don't want to be angry, but Jack has gone too far. To think he'd involve others in such a lie to deceive me, I've had enough. As soon as he gets back, I'm divorcing him immediately. Lucas's face lit up with joy as he made his promise. Don't worry, as long as I'm here, I won't let you suffer even the slightest bit of harm. I looked coldly at this murderer, the fire of anger burning in my chest. Char, my heart has always belonged to you. Under the dim, intimate light, the love between them felt like a deep, dark abyss, making it hard for me to breathe, making me want to flee. But Charlotte, I'm never coming back. Your happiness is no longer my concern. In the following days, Charlotte and Lucas went on outings together, forgetting me completely. They drove my car, used my credit cards, and stayed in my house. It wasn't until Charlotte began to sense something was wrong that she started to feel distracted even when she was with Lucas. I hadn't sent her a single message or made a call in 10 days. In the past, that would have been unthinkable. The last message in our chat was one I had sent the previous week, nothing more. Charlotte, with rising anger typed furiously, Jack, I don't have time to play hide and seek with you, are you dead somewhere, get back here and finalize the divorce, I let out a bitter laugh, unfortunately, I really was dead out there, Charlotte waited three more days but received no reply, she could no longer sit still, her desire to cut ties with me growing more urgent, so, one day, Charlotte, accompanied by Lucas, went straight to my office, I'm sorry, Jack hasn't been to work in several days, didn't we already contact you about this, the receptionist responded, her tone filled with confusion. Hearing this, Charlotte froze, speechless for a long time. When she finally came to her senses, she suddenly remembered something. Pulling out her phone with trembling hands, I rubbed my eyes, letting out a self-mocking laugh, thinking I had seen it wrong. Was Charlotte finding this hard to believe? Hadn't she been wishing for my death all along? Now who was she pretending for? I watched as she slowly pulled up a number from her blacklist and dialed it. Finally, the ringing seemed to last an eternity. Charlotte's voice was filled with anger when she spoke. Where is Jack right now? On the other end, Victoria let out a bitter laugh. Sister-in-law, I remember I called you, didn't I? Jack is dead, but you refuse to believe it. Do you even have a place for him in your heart? The weight of those words fell heavily on Charlotte's ears, exploding like a bomb. Why won't you tell me the truth? Where is Jack really? I looked at Charlotte, slightly losing her composure, feeling a mix of emotions I couldn't quite name. Victoria could no longer hold back. Her voice filled with rage as she shouted, Fine, if you really don't believe it, come and identify the body, you wretched woman. Chapter 4 After the call ended, Charlotte clutched her phone tightly, muttering to herself, No, that's impossible. Jack couldn't be dead. Victoria must be lying. Meanwhile, Lucas gently patted her back, pretending to comfort her. Maybe Jack got caught up with something outside and couldn't make it back in time. I couldn't help but admire Lucas's meticulous performance. He knew full well that I was dead. Yet he continued to lie and deceive. Charlotte quickly regained her composure, letting out a sarcastic laugh, her tone laced with thinly veiled anger. Right. Someone like Jack wouldn't die so easily. He's a meteorologist. There's no way he'd die in an avalanche. Bad things always seem to linger. I lowered my gaze, a bitter smile tugging at my lips. Why was I always so worthless in her eyes? There were countless nights when I doubted myself, wondering if I hadn't done enough. But now I understood. It wasn't that I wasn't good enough. It was that there was never a place for me in Charlotte's heart. No matter how good I was, she would never see it. Throughout the journey, Charlotte acted as if she didn't care, but the sweat on the side of her face betrayed her. I knew Charlotte too well. Whenever she was nervous, she would sweat. For a brief moment, I found myself eagerly anticipating Charlotte's reaction when she saw my body. Lucas, still playing the part of the attentive, obedient man, held Charlotte's hand gently. Don't worry, no matter what happens, I'll be by your side. Charlotte, touched nodded in agreement. At the police station, Victoria was already waiting in the lobby. When she saw Charlotte and Lucas approaching, 
Her expression turned scornful and mocking, her eyes slightly red. I knew she was feeling indignant on my behalf. Jack just had an accident, and here you are, eager to start over with someone else. How could you do this? You don't deserve to be called my sister-in-law. Charlotte immediately stepped in front of Lucas, her face full of defensiveness, as if protecting him from even the slightest harm. What does Lucas have to do with this? Watch your mouth. Your senior can't even compare to a single hair on his head. She paused for a moment, glancing around as if searching for me. Where is Jack? What's his game this time? You've even involved the police in this. What does he hope to achieve? My soul floated nearby, feeling an overwhelming emptiness. Victoria's eyes flashed with cold fury, and she could no longer hold back. She rushed forward and slapped Charlotte hard across the face. The force of the slap was immense, the sound echoing loudly, and it happened so quickly that no one had time to react. Jack was such a good man. How could he have fallen for someone as cruel as you? Do you have no conscience, Charlotte? All these years, we've all seen how good he was to you. What right do you have to slander him? Her voice was filled with heart-wrenching pain and hatred. Victoria had always been a kind and gentle girl, someone who had even been bullied in school for being too introverted, a lonely girl in a foreign place. She often cried in secret, which broke my heart. I treated her like my own sister, encouraging her whenever I could. Watching her grow stronger and more courageous day by day, it made me proud. But now, I'm sorry, little sister, I can no longer be the one you confide in. Charlotte's head snapped to the side, caught off guard by the slap. Her eyes filled with rage as she prepared to strike back, but a police officer quickly intervened, grabbing her arm. What's going on here? Do you think this is a marketplace? Victoria glared at Charlotte, her face showing signs of exhaustion as she let out a faint, self-mocking smile. You didn't believe it before, did you? Well. Now the police are here. Let's go identify the body. For a moment, Charlotte seemed stunned, but she quickly regained her composure. She raised an eyebrow, her demeanor light and carefree. Fine. I'd like to see how this farce ends. The morgue was cold, just like the day I was buried under the avalanche. My heart ached painfully. Victoria ignored Charlotte, turning instead to the police officer, her expression restrained but full of sorrow. Officer, we're here to identify Jack's body, with a loud whoosh. A drawer from the cold storage was pulled open revealing the body of a man. From a distance, Charlotte's entire body sagged, crumbling in an instant. Chapter 5 My body lay stiff and pale, drained of all color, taking on the frosty white hue of someone who had died in the cold. Upon closer inspection, patches of snow and frost still clung to my skin. Perhaps it was because I had been lifeless for so long that vivid red liver mortis had formed, emitting a faint stench of decay. Several people in the room instinctively covered their noses and mouths. Oddly enough, in my final moment, I was smiling. The sight was so eerie it sent chills down everyone's spine. They say that before freezing to death, people often dream of their happiest moments. And I had dreamed of Charlotte. The irony was that in my dream, we were deeply in love. How laughable, it was supposed to be a happy smile. Yet it was nothing more than the desperate illusion of a dying man. Charlotte remained frozen in place, as if her feet were cemented to the ground. Her mouth hung open in disbelief, and she shook her head, murmuring, How can this be? How could Jack be dead? I silently looked away my heart heavy with sorrow, unable to bear the sight of my own corpse. Victoria stared at my body, sadness clouding her eyes as she wiped away her tears. Now do you believe it? Jack froze to death in that avalanche. Charlotte's heart clenched painfully, her eyes turning red and brimming with tears. Her voice trembled, rough with sorrow. I'm sorry, I didn't know it would come to this. Her reaction caught me off guard. In life, she had loathed me so much. Yet now, in death, she seemed so distraught. Lucas quickly supported her as she wavered on her feet pretending to offer comfort. Char, don't be too sad. None of us could have seen this coming. I couldn't help but smile bitterly. Unforeseen. Lucas had orchestrated this entire situation to kill me. Victoria's anger flared, her voice seething with resentment. If it weren't for you two, Jack would never have gone to that godforsaken place. You've always had your eyes on your unforgettable first love, never sparing a thought for Jack. Charlotte, hearing this, momentarily forgot her grief and immediately defended Lucas. This has nothing to do with Lucas. He didn't know anything. Besides, I never asked Jack to go, he insisted on following me. Even though I had already seen through Charlotte, her words still made my heart falter, plunging me into complete despair. It was my own fault. I had been so concerned for her safety that I had risked my life, but was it really wrong to love someone? Lucas lowered his head, his face hidden in the shadows, making it impossible to read his expression. Only the slight, gloating smile at the corner of his lips betrayed him. Victoria's chest heaved with fury, ready to lash out, but before she could, a police officer entered the room. There's been a new development in the case. We found a witness. The officer's words hit like a bombshell. Charlotte's eyes widened in shock, and she grabbed the officer's arm, urgently asking, 
Isn't this just a simple avalanche case? What's really going on? The person brought in was a man with a face unfamiliar to me, I didn't recognize him. But as soon as Lucas saw the man, his expression changed drastically. I finally remembered who he was, one of the people who had gone skiing with us. The man entered the room and immediately locked eyes with Lucas, his gaze unwavering, slowly. He raised his hand and pointed directly at Lucas. It was him. I saw with my own eyes how he ignited the explosion. Charlotte's eyes widened in shock as she stared at Lucas, her lips trembling. She couldn't believe what she was hearing, her voice shaking. Lucas, is it true? Did you really do this? Victoria clenched her fists tightly, barely restraining herself from lunging at Lucas. An avalanche can spiral out of control with just a loud noise. Did you do it on purpose to kill Jack? Lucas maintained an innocent expression as he moved closer to Charlotte, his voice desperate as he tried to explain. Char, I would never do such a thing. I'm being framed. But in the next moment, the men shattered Lucas's lie without hesitation. I have a video recording. It's all on tape. And I can prove it. Chapter 6 Lucas's expression instantly turned vicious. He must never have imagined that his actions that day would have been caught on camera. The phone screen displayed footage from the day of the avalanche. In the video, Lucas could be seen hiding behind a rock, igniting something. While not far away, my anxious figure searched frantically. Then came the loud boom. The entire sequence was captured clearly on video. The brutal truth laid bare for everyone to see. The men looked righteously at the police officer. I saw him acting suspiciously, so I followed him. But by the time I realized what was happening and tried to warn the innocent men, it was too late. Each word he spoke laid out the cruel reality of my death. Charlotte's face was full of shock. She stumbled backward a few steps, grabbing Lucas's sleeve, her voice trembling as she demanded, What's going on? Lucas, did you kill Jack? Lucas remained silent, his head bowed, seemingly lost in thought. But Charlotte pressed him, her voice growing louder. Answer me. Why did you do this? My soul hovered nearby, coldly observing the scene as the two of them turned against each other. All I felt was a deep sense of irony. Finally, Lucas lifted his head and let out a bitter laugh. Why did I do it? I did it all for you. You were the one who kept saying you hated Jack. So why are you pretending now? Do you even have the right to criticize me? Lucas tore off his mask completely, forcefully shaking off Charlotte's hand. She was violently thrown to the ground. All traces of his former tenderness gone in an instant. See? This world is full of illusions, even love. Jack could have escaped, but because of you, he went into the heart of the avalanche looking for you. Who's to blame for his stupidity? Risking his life for a woman who didn't love him. Lucas's tone was full of disdain, but his words were true. Charlotte collapsed to the floor, unable to hold back her tears. She covered her face, crying uncontrollably, filled with helplessness and confusion. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I let out a bitter smile. What's the point of crying now, Charlotte? Wasn't my death exactly what you wanted? You should be happy. Then, Charlotte suddenly lunged at Lucas, slapping him hard across the face before they started to fight furiously. Her voice was filled with hatred. Why? You killed Jack. I want you to pay with your life. The scene quickly descended into chaos until the police finally pulled them apart. Lucas was then forcibly handcuffed. Victoria's gaze was icy as she watched. Unwilling to engage with the two lunatics, she instead made arrangements with the police for further proceedings. Then, with a look of utter disdain, she turned to Charlotte and said, Watching dogs fight is truly satisfying. With that, she left to prepare for my funeral. Charlotte, her hair disheveled and her makeup smeared beyond recognition, was a rare sight of disarray and loss of composure. She staggered toward my body, slowly reaching out to gently caress my cheek, her touch so careful, as if she feared breaking me. Tears once again streamed down her face uncontrollably. Jack, it's my fault. I'm so sorry for what I did to you. As I watched, my heart remained unmoved. Tears fell onto my cold, lifeless face, but a dead man can't feel anything, and I no longer long for this belated love. Chapter 7 Charlotte returned home alone, stepping into the overwhelming darkness that greeted her. The house was still in the same state of disarray as it had been after that fateful day. She silently closed the door, walked into the kitchen, and poured herself a glass of water. As she drank, she absentmindedly opened the refrigerator, and there, right in front of her, was the cake. Charlotte froze her hand gripping the refrigerator door so tightly that her knuckles turned white. In that moment, all the emotions she had been suppressing finally erupted. The cake's shelf life was short, and even though it had been in the fridge, it had long since spoiled. But Charlotte didn't care. She took the cake out, her hands trembling. Then, she began to eat it, spoonful after spoonful, shoveling it into her mouth without regard for appearances, the cream smearing her face and clothes. Watching Charlotte break down in such a way was unfamiliar to me and I couldn't quite describe the feeling it stirred within me. She ate the entire cake. When she finally finished, Charlotte could no longer stand. She slid down to the floor, 
her body collapsing as sobs escaped her in the quiet of the house, her words barely more than whispers. Jack, please come back, won't you? I was wrong. I really know I was wrong. Isn't that how people are? They don't cherish what they have when it's alive, and only regret it once it's gone. But there are no do-overs in life. Everyone must pay for their mistakes. After a long while, Charlotte suddenly remembered something in the trash. She quickly got up and began to frantically rummage through it until she found the torn pieces of our photograph, along with the photo. She also found the gift I had never managed to give her, a pearl necklace I had spent a long time picking out. Charlotte stared blankly at the pile of torn photos and the necklace. Her silence was absolute, her eyes empty, her heart aching in a way that words couldn't describe. When she opened her mouth, only a raspy breath escaped. Charlotte didn't sleep that night. She spent the entire time painstakingly piecing together the torn photograph, treating it as if it were a precious treasure, seemingly forgetting how she had so casually discarded it as trash. As dawn began to break, Charlotte's eyes were bloodshot, but she looked at the photo on the table, now glued back together, with the joy of a child who had recovered something precious. The photo was whole again, but the tear marks that marred it would never disappear, just as we, separated by life and death, could never return to what we once were. Victoria organized my funeral with dignity and grace. At the service, she wept bitterly, but her eyes remained steadfast as she made a vow to my memorial. Brother, don't worry, I'll pull myself together and live a good life. Hearing her words, the last of my worries melted away, but Charlotte wasn't allowed inside the funeral. This was Victoria's explicit instruction. She coldly issued the order, turning Charlotte away despite her grief-stricken expression. You're not welcome here. You don't deserve to attend my brother's funeral. Charlotte stood outside, begging desperately. Her tone humbled to the ground. Please, Victoria, just let me see him one last time. I want to say goodbye. But Victoria didn't even look back, leaving Charlotte to break down in hysterics alone. Charlotte, from this moment on, we owe each other nothing. A few days later, Lucas was released from the police station. The video was deemed insufficient as evidence and couldn't substantiate a criminal conviction. When Charlotte heard the news, she flew into a rage at home. Her face twisted with anger. Once she calmed down, she quietly cleaned up the mess. In the mirror, Charlotte carefully put on the pearl necklace I had given her, her makeup flawless. Then she took out her phone and sent a message to Lucas. Tonight at 9.30, meet me at our old spot. I have something important to discuss with you. At that moment, I had no idea that the seeds of hatred in Charlotte's heart were beginning to take root. Chapter 8 My soul followed Charlotte to an old neighborhood, where it was already late, and there were few people on the streets. In the distance, I saw Lucas waiting by the roadside. Charlotte put on a gentle and pitiful expression, masking the hatred in her eyes. She gently took hold of Lucas's arm, softening her voice. Lucas, I'm sorry. I was too impulsive that day and said things I didn't mean. Please don't take it to heart. She looked up at him with watery, glistening eyes, full of affection. And Lucas, despite himself, couldn't resist. After all, she was someone he had once loved, and he couldn't completely harden his heart. He let out a sigh. All right, Char, I don't blame you. Upon hearing this, Charlotte's face lit up with a smile, and she nodded eagerly before wrapping her arms around Lucas. I knew you still loved me. Just as Lucas was about to hug her back, a muffled groan filled the air. Laden with suppressed pain, Charlotte had brought a brick down hard on Lucas's head. I watched in shock as Lucas fell to the ground, blood trickling down his face. He writhed in pain, unable to get back up. Charlotte, you, you deceived me. Charlotte looked down at him, her lips curling into a faint smile, her expression cold and detached you need to pay for Jack's life. She bent down, grabbed the back of Lucas's shirt, and, with a surprising amount of strength, began to drag him. Only then did I realize that behind the neighborhood, hidden in the woods, there was an ice house. Charlotte dragged Lucas to the deepest part of the ice house, the cold seeping into their bones, making them shiver uncontrollably. Lucas's voice came out in broken fragments, pleading for help. Please, Charlotte, save me. I don't want to die. Charlotte gave a sad, bitter laugh her gaze growing increasingly fierce. Since we are both responsible for Jack's death, then we both should die. Without hesitation, she turned the ice house's temperature to its lowest setting. After speaking, Charlotte walked to a corner of the ice house, her high heels clicking on the floor. She sat down, hugging her knees to her chest, her hands gently stroking the pearl necklace around her neck. Behind her, Lucas lay motionless on the ground, his face pale, his body slowly freezing until it stiffened and straightened, his breath finally stopping. He froze to death. Charlotte, too, began to feel the cold wrapping around her, like an invisible layer of ice crystals. Even her breath turned to white mist. She shivered helplessly, her face twisted in pain from the cold, her teeth chattering, and her thoughts growing increasingly chaotic. As she neared death, Charlotte's mind was filled with sorrow. She realized just how much Jack must have suffered before he died, how excruciating it was to freeze to death, 
In her blurry vision, Charlotte thought she saw my spirit. She used all her strength to lift her hand, trying to reach out to me, whispering my name over and over. Jack, I'm coming to find you. Finally, the world fell silent. Everything had reached its conclusion. I breathed out one last sigh, my heart filled with relief. It was time for me to go. Not every love story has a happy ending. The world is full of regrets. What's most important is that life is about so much more than just fleeting romances. There are other things worth living for. It took me this short life to learn that lesson. I hope that everyone learns to cherish what they have without needing to experience loss.